Hello and welcome back to another session of how to get started in the home learning edition of Mastcam. In this session, I want to take you to grabcad.com. I'll show you how to download a step file, open up that step file in Mastcam, and separate a component out of a assembly, separating it out to its own level, and then getting it ready by orienting it and rotating it to get it ready for a machine file. So let's get started. All right, so in your browser, go ahead and do a search for grabcat.com. Once you get to this page, click on Browse Cat Library, and then click on the search bar and type in fixture 297. Click Enter. Now look at the fixture on the left side, fixture 297 cam clamps. Click on that and then scroll down and where it says files, click on it and it opens up all the available files. And what we're interested in is the step file. So we're going to click on step file and then click download file. And that's going to download this whole assembly right here. All right, so right here in your download folder, you should see the 297 cam clamps dot step file. Okay, we're going to now open that up from the Mastercam software. All right, so we're going to open up that file from Mastercam, and we do that by clicking on this little folder in the upper left hand corner that opens up your browser window. We're going to select the downloads folder. And if you don't see it, you may need to set this to all files. It may be set to Mastercam files only, and therefore you may not see it because it is a step file. Once you select all files, you should see the step file, select it, and then click open. And then Mastercam will import it in. And you should see it in just a few seconds. And there it is. So you can see all the different components that makes up this assembly. So now let's talk about how we're going to separate out this part right here that I just made yellow. And we're going to separate that out to its own level. And then we're going to orient it and tie it to the origin the way we want to start machining it. All right. So what we're looking at right now is the solids tab. And you can see all the different part models that make up this assembly. If we go to the levels tab, you can see how all those components are on their own level. So what we want to do is separate out the part that is currently yellow. And I don't want to disturb the assembly the way it is. So I'm going to copy it to its own level. So the next available level is 26. So I'm going to go ahead and make it 30. So with this part highlighted, I'm going to right click and select change level. So I click on that. It opens up this menu and I don't want to move it to a different level. I want to copy it to a different level. Okay. I'm going to uncheck this box. Then from the select button, we're going to create a new level and we're going to give it a name and we'll give it a name lever. Okay, and we'll click OK. Gives me one more chance to look at what I just did. I created level 30 and I gave it a name. And we're going to copy it and then click OK. So now if I scroll down, you can see that the level now exists. Now to turn all the other levels off, I simply click on this little icon that says turn all levels off. And now I've isolated that part on its own level. So I'm not disturbing anything in the original assembly. So now we're just looking at the component. And what we want to do is right click and select top view. Now the origin is right here. And I need to make sure that the origin is tied to one of the corners of the part. Okay. Now that's really easy to do. If you go to wireframe, we're going to select bounding box and we're going to make sure that at the lower part of the screen right here, we're going to select 3D. 
I want to roll it just a little bit so you can see what happens. And then the software says select one or more entities. So I'm just going to select that part. It highlights and then click end selection. Now notice that it creates a box and so it looks at all the geometry and it creates a box around that part. Now once I click OK it gives me a 3D wireframe of the extents of the part. When I go back to top you can see that's the width and that is the length and if I look at it from the front you can see there is a wireframe basically showing the extents in the on the height and the the width of this part. So now I'm going to take advantage of having this box to tie it to the origin. So from the transform menu I'm going to select move to origin. I'm going to roll it just a little bit and I want to select this corner right here. Now that's all I have to do to move that part to the origin. So I'll go back to top view, zoom in on it. Now that's pretty good orientation I got my Z set to the top of the part and tied to the upper left hand corner, but that's not really how I want to machine it. I want to machine it basically looking like this. Okay, that's how I want to start. So I got a rotation, a couple of rotations to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight that part and transform it, rotate it. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. Now, if I enter 90, you can see it makes a copy. So, first of all, I'll make sure that I tell it to move. And that is the wrong way. So, I can go to opposite. Okay. So, that looks good. I click OK. Now, I really want to look at it like this. Okay. So, I have another rotation to do. So, I have to do that from the front. I'm going to highlight it all, transform, rotate. Now I have to do 180. So I'm going to enter 180 in this field right here. Click enter and then click OK. Now go back to top view. That's the orientation that I want to start with. Now I want to make sure that the top of my part is Z0. So I'll go back to move to origin. Let it snap to the upper left hand corner there. And now it is oriented to the origin like I want it. And now I am ready to start machining. All right, if you were following along and if you had any trouble trying to do a rotation in the front view, you may need to go to the planes tab. So look at the lower left hand corner right here. Click on planes and look for the icon with the two little arrows. Click on the pull down menu and make sure that you have a check mark in front of C plane follows G view and tool plane follows C plane. If those are not checked, it probably will give you some trouble trying to do the rotation the way I showed you. So make sure you got check marks in front of these and you should be good to go. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to set up your stock and how to create some tool paths machining this part. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.